All right, we just got done pouring. We got a house, put the lolly columns in, the floor because that's cold here, so they had to run the beams. Made pouring it a little bit more difficult. Hey guys, Mike here, and thanks for clicking on that thumbnail. Now we got some issues on this job, and I wanna talk about those. We'll get to those in a minute here, but if you're new to this channel, we're all about concrete here. Everything about concrete. We pour and finish all different types of concrete. We repair concrete. We do concrete coatings and overlays. So if you like that kind of stuff, please go down, down there and hit subscribe now. So this job, we're pouring a basement floor. And as you can see, it's not, it's not wide open. They, uh, they put the beams in, they put the lolly columns in, they got to put those braces on. It's got four inches of styrofoam. That white stuff is styrofoam. So they had to lay down four inches of that. And then they also laid it up the edge a little bit. If you can see, it's got like an eight inch piece going all the way around the perimeter up the edge. So there was a few different issues we had to deal with that we don't normally have to deal with on a wide open floor. And that's what I want to talk about on this video. But first, for you guys that do concrete, for you guys that are contractors or builders, or if you're just in construction in general, what are the types of issues that you have to deal with that you don't really care about? Let me know down in the comments. It'd be interesting to see of what your pet peeves are, um, the issues that make your jobs harder. This is one of those jobs where easy pour, it's 38 by 30 house, but just these adding these few things makes pouring the concrete floor twice as hard as it, as it usually is. So these are the issues we got to deal with. You know, first is you can see where the trucks backed in. We have to run the chutes down in between those braces. So instead of just backing it up in the middle and being able to pour that concrete floor basically from one spot. Now we got to move it from spot to spot to spot. But not only that, you can see how Darren, he's got to lift up there, take the chute off, re-angle the chute so we can pour from one side of that brace, you know, over to the other side. So the real issue is, you know, it's not necessarily having to pour in between the braces. It's, you got to be careful not to hit the brace. I mean, there's not much really holding those braces that are holding the center beam. So let's say we hit a brace with a chute, break a brace. That's really the only thing holding that beam up. You got the lolly column, but there's nothing stabilizing the lolly column. So if one of those braces goes, that down comes that beam. So that's, that's kind of an issue to me. I don't really care about working under those beams like that. And yes, I mean, they could put more braces on, I suppose, just put more stuff in our way. But it's, it's just something we got to deal with on, you know, it's not an everyday thing, but occasionally we got to deal with these types of things where the town we're working in requires the lolly columns to be in the concrete floor instead of, instead of securing it on top of the concrete floor. So most of the floors we do like this are wide open, no lolly columns, no beams. We can just back the truck up and we don't have to worry about working in between things and dropping the chute in and out, moving the truck from spot to spot. We just back a truck up, empty it out, and it's gone. Um, this one here, we you know we have to, actually had to move the truck, I think four different times to empty this one truck. And then in the meantime, you know while we're moving it back and forth, back and forth, we're also being careful not to hit one of those two by fours with the turnbuckle on it because number one, we don't want the beam to fall, but even if we did hit one, we don't want to have to adjust the, the lolly column and re-plumb it, make sure it's perfectly straight. So we're being really careful with that stuff. Number one, we don't want anybody to get hurt. Number two, we don't want to have to deal with fixing anything. So this is just a few of the things we deal with on a, on a occasional basis here, pouring concrete floors. You can see Darren and Luke are over there screeding that with a probably about a 10 foot screed. Normally we'd use like a 14 foot screed and have a pad, a wet pad right in the center of this floor. So we wouldn't have to screed in between the lolly columns. We'd just screed right down on one side, screed then go over to the other side and have to come down that side. So we'd come down basically two sides. Now what we're doing is we're having to screed in between each section of lolly column too. So 
I mean, it just makes the pour go a little bit slower. We normally dump a, this is a 10 and a half yard truck right here. We'd probably dump a 10 and a half yard truck out in about, I don't know, five, six minutes probably on a floor like this without anything in the way. And we probably easily triple or quadruple that time with uh, the lolly columns, the beams, and the, and the braces in the way. Right now what I'm doing is I'm stomping out a concrete ball that came out of the truck, probably the size of a basketball, dropped out of the chute. I'm just breaking it up, making sure that none of the, none of the dry chunks out of that ball get, get up there on the surface of the concrete. Just make sure it's all mixed in really good. Now we got about three quarters of that first truck dumped out. He's you can see his chute kind of over there on the right. Um, so we're just getting it screened out. Normally we'd dump him all out before we even started screeding, but I guess we just decided to do it in sections on this one, so it slows the pour down quite a bit. This Tia there, bull floating. She's doing a good job bull floating. Duke, uh, Darren and Luke there are screeding. And I'm trying to get the truck empty. We got actually got two more trucks coming. We got the garage to pour here. There's that back section in white to pour. And then there's a breezeway. That that white section up there on the left on top of the wall. That's another pour. We got four different pours we're doing here. Which I'll show the other three on the next upcoming video. So that's another good reason to subscribe. If you want to see how those pours went. And see if we had any other issues up there. But this one's going to be about the concrete floor. So the beams, the lolly columns, the braces, that's an issue. Having to move the truck, multiple, one truck multiple spots, going in and out of those braces, that's another issue. And then a third issue is, see that white styrofoam coming up the edge? Well, they just wanted a, some type of thermal break between the concrete wall and the concrete floor. And that's perfectly fine. That's not, that's not really that big a deal. The issue was they didn't they didn't glue it to the wall at all, so it's just floating there. Now, when we pour a concrete floor like this, we'll snap a chalk line. We'll 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 bring the laser down the basement, shoot our grade, you know, figure out where our four inches is going to be at, and then we'll mark the outside with a pencil, and then we'll snap a chalk line on there for grade. That's what we're mag floating the outside edges to. So. If they want styrofoam there, the best thing for them to do is to glue it to the wall. Just get some 3M adhesive, spray it on the wall, and then push that styrofoam up against the glue and it's secured in place. Well, these guys didn't do that. They just they just ripped up some 8-inch pieces, set them on the footing, and then they laid the flat pieces there to kind of hold them in place while they're just flopping back and forth, basically, and they're floating on top of that footing. So, it's we. I mean, we can still snap it, a line on them, to give us a, an idea but we got to go back and check it with the laser every three or four feet just to make sure that it, it is at grade and it's not floating or it hasn't sunk so that was just another issue we had to deal with on this floor was the the styrofoam on the edge just floating there that was kind of a pain in the butt I mean when we do that stuff when we install stuff like that occasionally we'll prep floors like this I mean, we'll glue it in place. It only takes an, an extra minute to go buy. You got to buy the can of glue, which is probably about five bucks to do this whole thing. Spray it on the wall and then secure the styrofoam with the glue. So that's what I would recommend doing. That's what I'll recommend to this guy, you know, on the next one. Because we usually do two or three floors for this guy a year. Um, I'm actually working for the foundation guy, but the builder is, is the guy I'm talking about. So having the styrofoam there, that was kind of a pain in the butt to work around. You can see he put it on these upper ones too, and it's not level. It's just kind of sitting there. So the best thing for us, if you want us to, to pour up against styrofoam, is to have it secured in place so it's not moving, and then we can shoot our grades on it. So again, Darren and Luke are using a shorter screed than they normally would without any lolly columns, and their screeding just the bays that are in between the lolly columns. Those lolly columns, they, I mean, you don't want to lean against them right now. There's only, you know, the weight of that beam holding them in place. They do have a plate on the top that's under the beam and the lolly column kind of 
slides into that plate. But that's basically all that's holding those wallet columns is just the weight of those beams. We've we've leaned up against them by accident before and have them fallen right over in the concrete. And they're, those beams are heavy. I mean, those wallet columns are heavy. They're filled with concrete. So it's just we don't want to knock one over. So we're being real careful about them. You can see I had to move that first truck for the fourth time. That's where he ended up right there so I could get him empty. I'm just going to have him blast his concrete out right there. So again, you guys watching that that are in construction, what types of issues that you deal with on a daily basis or maybe occasional basis that just make your job a ton hotter. Let me know down in the comments, guys. It was really hot and humid this morning too. It was, it we're working pretty close to the ocean today. It was really foggy this morning on the drive down. The humidity is, you know, probably about a hundred percent. Temperature is at six thirty seven in the morning. We're around 70, 75 degrees here in Maine, so it's it's pretty uncomfortable working conditions. It's going to get up into the eighties and nineties. We get pretty hot weather here in Maine in the summers. For about probably about three months, it can get you know 90 to 100 for about three months not every day but but you know off and on and then come like september ish it starts getting to where it's really comfortable working weather so i just got rid of that first truck we got him out of the way and now i'm back in the second truck in here the whole floor figured around 13 yards or so this was Ten and a half on the first one. This second truck has ten and a half on it too, so we're gonna use him in the garage after. And again, that'll be coming on the next video, the garage pour, so make sure you subscribe to see that. Also, you guys that want to learn how to do concrete like us, I'll just I'll mention this real quick. I've got a training program down in the description of the video called the Concrete Underground. So any of you guys that want to learn how to do concrete or maybe do it for a living like we do, that's the place to be. I got a bunch of private trainings down there. Plus, you get access to me. You can I give you my number. You can call me. Um, we can email. You, we can talk inside the Concrete Underground in the forums. So that's a great place to learn how to do concrete. All kinds of trainings in there. You can see T is bull floating that. She's doing a good job with the bull float. Now we're getting the second truck mixed up. It uh. You know, he didn't know exactly what the slump was. You can see now, he, we just had to move him from where he was over the top of that beam, make sure we didn't hit the brace, readjust the chute, and we still have to hold a little small six foot, eight foot chute to get the concrete where we need it. Whereas normally we wouldn't have to do that. I know I sound like I'm ranting a little bit, but I'm just, I'm letting you guys know some of the things that we have to deal with here and there that make our job a little bit harder in case, uh, I don't know, in case you're in the type of business we're in or you're a builder and you're wondering, well, we'll just put these up. That's no big deal. Well, it is a little bit of a big deal. I mean, it's a safety issue, number one, for us. Uh, it does make our job harder. Not that we don't deal with it. I mean, we've had to deal with it for years and years and years, so we just take it with a grain of salt, mostly. It's just the times that, like when I showed up on this particular job, they were delivering all the lumber, the, the plywood, the two by sixes, the two by fours, the lumber for all the framing, the 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 roof, everything. There was just there was just stacks and stacks of lumber and they were putting it all around the foundation so we couldn't even back a concrete truck up close to this thing. So luckily I showed up at the same time the lumber guy was here. He was he had all the lumber off except for his very last um, stack of plywood. So I get out and I'm like, um, you know, we're pouring this floor tomorrow. That stuff's kind of all right in the way. Could you move it? And luckily he was a really nice guy. He didn't have any issue with moving it at all. It's just, you know, that was, that would have been a, a big issue if, if I hadn't shown up when I did. It was just pure luck I did. Um, but we got it all moved and got access to this thing. So it, it didn't end up being being a big deal at all. Yeah, you can see all that see all that lumber up there on the right at the top. All that stuff, plus there's a bunch on the left over there. That was all around the foundation. Everywhere. We we wouldn't have been able to get anything close to this. We would have had to pump it probably. 
Well, Darren and I are coming down around that last bay there, getting around that, that pipe. I have no idea what that pipe's for. It could be for radon. Uh, it could be a floor drain, for all I know. No one tells us. No one marks it. If it's a floor drain, guys, this, if this is like, like you're setting this up, you're the GC or whatever, if you have a pipe like that and it's a floor drain, all you got to do is write drain on it with a Sharpie or something. And then the concrete guy will know it's a floor drain and he'll cut it off and put a drain on it. That's what I would do. But if you don't do anything to it, then how do we know what it is? So if it's radon, you know, write radon on it and then we'll know that it needs to be nice and straight. We tried to straighten that. You can see it's a little out of plumb there, but it was just, it, that's where they put it and that's what we couldn't move it. So we're getting down to the last bay now. We're trying, uh, we got the chute turned around on the truck. That's one of our little chute tricks I've, I've shown you in other videos. And then uh, I'm going to get out of there. We'll get another guy out of there. And then just Darren and that's Eric there in the white. Uh, Darren and Luke will finish pouring this bay down. Well, I'm going to take that second truck and I'm going to go over to the garage and I'll stop pouring that before these guys are even done. You can see the access to getting out of this bay. There's no windows in this basement. Um, I don't even know how you can pour a basement like this and not have a window in it. It just doesn't seem like it. it doesn't seem right. They got a bulkhead way over on the other side. But that's basically going to be the only access other than after the house is built. They'll have a staircase. But, I mean, you'd think you'd have some windows in something like this. At least a couple. So those, I mean, those are the basic issues like I talked about in the thumbnail. I mean, the styrofoam, the lollicombs, the beams, the braces, having to pour in and out. And now we got too much concrete in there. So this is how we get the concrete out. Let me know if you guys got a better way of getting concrete out of a basement like this when you have too much. I'd like to know. This is the kind of the way we've always done it is with a five gallon bucket. And that's kind of a pain in the butt. You can only really fill the bucket up about half full before it gets too heavy so we got a few buckets too much in there but i guess better than running a few buckets short but we'll get that out of there and then we'll drop that ladder back down so another guy can get out and then luke's gonna finish up finish up screeding that magging it out and then Luke had a little issue right at the end. Make sure you stay till the end to see the issue that he had um, after he pulls the ladder out. That was kind of funny, actually. At least I thought it was funny. So he'll get that screeded out. He'll just use a little five-foot screed, and then he'll mag float. Well, the bow float, what he can reach there, and then he'll get rid of the bow float. And he's got to get his footprints out of there mag float what he can and then uh going up that ladder i mean he has to kind of lean outwards to balance himself so eric's kind of holding the top of the ladder you can see he pulled it away from the foundation so after luke gets up and they and they pull this ladder out the normally what we'll do is we'll right where the ladder goes in the concrete it leaves kind of a little mess there like a couple little a couple little holes in the concrete by pulling those legs out we try to try to poke them in there the best we can, but normally we'll take a come along after and, and kind of just smooth that out a little bit better. So when it comes time to finish, there isn't a couple big holes there. But these walls were a little extra high, so Luke Luke had as you see right here in a second. Luke's going to have a little bit of a tough time reaching those. I guess we we could have a come along with a longer handle that would help. But you can see he didn't dare, he couldn't quite reach down, so he was like, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to leave him. All right, we just got done pouring. We got a house, garage. We got a little bedroom area way back there. You can see that. We got a breezeway area right there. We got to finish all today. So we just got these all poured. It's about 9.30. Started pouring about 7. Um, this one, they had to put the lolly columns in the floor because that's cold here, so they had to run the beams. Made pouring it a little bit more difficult. But it wasn't too bad. We got 31 and a half yards. The garage slopes two inches from the back towards the front. Um, 
Should have set up pretty good today. It's pretty hot and humid today, so we got to put a finish on all these floors, saw them up, and then expecting to be out of here by about 1 or 2 o'clock this afternoon.